Did you ever wish your projects had access to precise time without relying on the internet? In video number 503, we built a solid GPS-based time server using a Raspberry Pi. It worked, but let's be honest, it was bulky. Now imagine the same functionality, but packed into a tiny ESP32 Super Mini board. Today, we'll build a precision NTP server that easily fits in your palm. And along the way, we'll uncover why some high-quality GPS modules on AliExpress are suspiciously cheap. Intrigued? Let's dive in. Gritsy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, bringing you a new episode with fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you'll always sit in the first row. In this episode, we will demystify the NTP protocol and discover its relationship with GPS. Build not one, but two versions of a compact NTP server. One using Wi-Fi and one using Ethernet. And learn what to look at if you buy GNSS receivers from AliExpress. Let's start with NTP, the Network Time Protocol. Defined in RFC 5905, it synchronizes computer clocks across networks using UDP port 123. NTP uses a tiered structure based on stratum levels. Stratum 0, ultra precise clocks like atomic clocks or GNSS satellites. These cannot be queried by NTP servers. Stratum 1, devices directly connected to Stratum 0 sources like the GPS time server we will build. Stratum 2 and higher, devices that synchronize with lower Stratum servers. So our PCs are probably in the Stratum 2 or higher class. The protocol exchanges multiple timestamps between a client and the server estimating round-trip delay and correcting for time offset. An innovative solution to an ancient engineering problem that had many solutions over time. Elder people remember the clock at the central place, like the church. And even younger people remember time signals sent by strong transmitters like DCF77 or WWVB. How accurate is NTP? On a local network, NTP can achieve 1 to 10 milliseconds of short-term accuracy. Even across the public internet, you still get respectable accuracy in the range of 10 to 100 milliseconds, thanks to delay compensation. But what about long-time accuracy? Here is where it gets even more impressive. Over time, NTP provides extremely stable timing. The clocks it relies on, Stratum Zero, are themselves continuously calibrated to stay correct for decades. So yes, NTP won't just be accurate tomorrow, it'll still be correct in 100 years. What if there is no network? That's where GNSS, the Global Navigation Satellite System, comes in. All GNSS satellites are equipped with onboard atomic clocks constantly synchronized by Stratum Zero references on Earth. They broadcast precise time to determine precise position. Which means any GNSS receiver, even a cheap one, receives the exact same time as those atomic clocks. No cables, no network, just air. What is GPS and what is GNSS? GPS was the first global positioning system. That is why it became a household name. GNSS is the correct name for the current status because it includes GPS, Galileo, GLONASS, Baidu and a few other constellations. Together they provide global coverage and global time synchronization too. Why an ESP32? Now back to the lab. On a Linux system, spinning up an NTP server is simple. The software is ready to go, as we saw in video number 503. But on the ESP32? 
We are writing our own software. Yes, it is a challenge. Yes, it is fun. And yes, it's totally worth because the result is smaller, cheaper, simpler and more reliable against mistreatment. Stick around as we go hands-on with both the Wi-Fi and the Ethernet versions of our tiny NTP server. We'll cover how to wire the GPS module, how to parse GNSS signals, how to respond to NTP clients, and where some AliExpress modules cut corners in ways you should definitely know about. GNSS receivers, the hardware hunt begins. Let's start with the GNSS receivers. On AliExpress, you'll typically find two kinds of modules. Those from Ublox, the well-known Swiss brand, and a range of Chinese alternatives, often at lower prices. Naturally, I choose Ublox, trusting the Swiss brand, right? But then I ask myself, why are these modules so cheap? The answer is hidden in the fine print. Many of these modules run very old firmware. They can't be updated, so they don't support Galileo or other modern constellations. Could they be fake? Maybe, I can't say for sure. So if you want access to all satellite constellations, double check what you're buying. For our use case though, these cut down modules are good enough. And for our tiny NTP server, I'll use this very small one that supports GPS and Baidu only. Antenna choices. Of course, no GNSS receiver works without an antenna. How to choose one? If your server has sky visibility, a passive patch antenna like this will do. The bigger should be better and also work below a tree or so. If it's indoors or obstructed, go with an active antenna like this one. It gets energy from your GPS module and therefore the cable can be quite long without problems. Or if you're aiming for minimal wiring, choose an antenna receiver combo and connect it directly to the ESP32. ESP32 board choices. I picked this C3 super mini board. Why? because it's tiny, perfect for our compact build, and it even includes an OLED display to show the current time. What more could you want? Now we get to the fun part, software. Most GNSS receivers talk over a serial connection at 9600 baud using the NMIA protocol, defined by the US National Marine Electronics Associations in the 1980s, it's old, but human readable. Fortunately, the tiny GPS Plus library makes decoding it easy. Just connect ground, 5V, RX, TX and an antenna to the UFL connector of the GNSS receiver. First, a quick test of the board. With a few lines of code, the OLED display shows our position. Nice! Now it's time to get serious with the NTP protocol and its timing. As mentioned earlier, NTP is able to compensate for network delays between the client and the server, which is critical for time sync across the public internet, but not that important for a local NTP server like ours. On the LAN, the time delays should be short and relatively constant. Still, understanding is essential. How NTP works. The NTP client sends a 48-byte UDP packet to the server. In that packet, only one timing field is filled, the transmit timestamp as a base. The server copies that timestamp, adds a receive timestamp, maybe does some other tasks, adds a transmit timestamp to the response and sends it back. All these times are based on the time of the precise GPS signals. When the response packet arrives at the client, it then adds the destination timestamp and runs two formulas. One to calculate round trip delay, one to calculate offset to adjust its internal clock. And all this is done without knowing in advance how long the request takes to travel. Elegant, right? 
The response packet, by the way, has the same form as the request. Just more fields are populated. Now let's implement it. As usual, I split the work in two RTOS tasks. One task reads and decodes the GPS signal. The other handles incoming NTP requests. This way the GPS serial communication doesn't slow down the NTP server and the code stays easy to follow. The NTP packet handling, thanks to ChatGPT, was easily generated and worked flawlessly. Let's try it. When my PC requests the time from my tiny NTP server, it gets an accurate response, just as expected. I do see a difference between the NTP server time and the Windows time though. This has to be expected because we only work down to the second. But is one false? Hard to tell, though Wi-Fi might introduce delays. Let's fix that. Going wired with Ethernet. I switched to an older ESP32 board with built-in Ethernet. Sadly, newer chips dropped this feature, but for our purpose, this old workhorse is perfect. This version isn't tiny anymore, so I also added a larger U-Blox GPS receiver and even included automatic port detection, as shown in a previous video. If you don't have Ethernet, no problem, this code works on Wi-Fi ESP32 boards too. Just plug and play. The PPS signal. To push precision further, I added experimental support for PPS, the pulse per second signal. This signal's rising or falling edge is incredibly accurate and perfect for time sync, especially for time fanatics or time nuts as we say. Try it if you want maximum precision. For me, it was not on the must-have list. What we achieved today. Our own tiny NTP server provides precise time, completely independent from the internet. We have a deeper understanding of how NTP handles timing and delay correction. We found a great use case for the ASP32 C3 Super Mini, complete with OLED time display. We built an Ethernet-based NTP server for more reliability. The groundwork for PPS synchronization is available for the serious time nuts out there. That's all for today. As always, you'll find all the relevant links in the description. If you found this video useful or interesting, please support the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.